I would like to start by introducing our first speaker, Dr. Raj Reddy. He's from Moza Bint Nasser University, Professor of Computer Science and Robotics at Carnegie Mellon University in Pittsburgh. Um, the topic today is digital content, the unfinished agenda. Um, I just, I will uh, kind of quickly take you through, within the 10 minutes given to me, uh, the past, present, and the future of digital content. The unique opportunity of content was obvious even before the invention of the PC. We were already scan, you know, looking at images and image processing was being done early as, as early as 60s in the, at Stanford AI labs. Uh, and the speech and image and audio digitization was happening. Uh, what was new was, rather than trying to process and understand what is in an image, maybe there's a huge market or desire for simply storing it and making it available. And uh, you see the business models, such as iTunes and Amazon, where they felt maybe we can sell it. And now you also see the business models of YouTube, where they say you don't need to sell it, you, know, you just put whatever you want and people will use it. And so it's a different business model. So what I want to do is quickly take you through all the different kind of content that the world uh, might be able to use, uh, might have, and uh, quickly take you through the options. And uh, basically, the original idea of uh, digital library was pr uh, promoted, uh, pr proposed by John McCarthy in 1975 or so. At that time, you, if you th look back at that time, there were no PCs, no Apple IIs, no nothing. However, we were already producing a lot of our theses online. And so he said, if they're online, why don't you put it up and make it available through the ARPANET? And uh, since then, uh, th that has been there in my mind ever since. In 1981, when I was in, in France, uh, we started in Centre Mondial uh, a French uh, digital library project to get the, all the books online. And uh, since uh, 1995, at Carnegie Mellon, uh, we have had a number of efforts, and I'd like to quickly show you the, uh, uh, one of the, the current state of the art at 1997. The, the, the grand challenge for, to us was, can you create access to all the content of the world, right? Not just books, not just music, not just videos, not just movies, not just TV, TVs, all published works, instantly available anywhere in the world, searchable and browsable in any language by both humans and machines. And uh, so this task we thought even then <clears throat> was something that's going to take hundreds of years and well beyond our lifetimes. And it's like building the Great Wall of China. So there are a lot of books that have been scanned. Uh, the the uh, that Million Book Project has scanned over two million books, and it's a partnership between China, India, Egypt, and USA. And here are some examples of it, including an ancient Urdu book, an uh, Arabic book. And it turns out we have over 10,000 old Arabic books that have been scanned and available uh, online. And uh, here is uh, an example of a newspaper. Uh, the uh, assumption is ultimately you'll be able to see large numbers of maybe a thousand newspapers for the next thousand years so that you can essentially go back in time at any point and be able to read them. And uh, the same is true for magazines, same is true for paintings and music and movies and lectures. And so, as I said, and, and monuments, you know, basically there are 870 or so UNESCO heritage sites around the world. None of us have the time or, or the ability to go see all of them or even some of them. Uh, more than 80% of the population never sees even more than one or two, that too if they're lucky. So the question is, can you provide all of those heritage sites online 
so that you can actually get access to and, and, and enjoy the monuments of the world, right? So there are a lot of research challenges. I won't go through them. There are also policy challenges, and I'd like to spend time on this, mainly because I think we are at a standstill. You know, Google, uh, there was a lawsuit, and they're kind of frozen right now, and hopefully it'll be settled. That is, about 7 to 8% of the books uh, are out of copyright, and they're available for free. Even Amazon and Apple, the iBooks and so on, make them available for free. And about 3 to 5% of the books, about 3 million books, uh, are available for sale because they're still uh, re more recent books and you can buy them in, uh, as iBooks or eBooks and so on from Amazon. The remaining 90% of the books or so are still in copyright, but nobody is making any money at them. It's called, the, we call them orphan books. They're simply frozen in time, nobody's benefiting, not the publishers, not the author, nobody else. And what we have been proposing is an enabling legislation that could be done, say, by Qatar, which says any book after five years or six years or ten years will, can be scanned and put online, but the author has the right to request removal of it. So it's an opt-out rather than opt-in. That was the thing that was ruled illegal in, uh, in USA by the courts, that uh, you have to go and ask each person for permission. That will never happen because many of them are dead and you can't reach them and it's still in copyright. And so the whole problem is tied up in knots. The small country like, you know, but the issue is not so much whether you scan it and make it available, it is somebody's property. You can't simply take it. So you have to be able to say, if anybody reads your book, we'll give you a small token royalty. England already does this in the form of what they call public lending right. I don't have the time right now, but if you're you interested, you can go type public lending right into Google and you'll find answers. So what I would like to end my talk with is there are all this content and unlike patent laws where your patent expires after 18 years, the copyright goes on for 100 years and they've been changing it every, every 10 years, 20 years, extending it by another year, another few years. So I, I wouldn't be surprised in another 20 years the copyright extends for 200 years. And so that kind of becomes ridiculous and, and the problem is while there may be some things like Mickey Mouse which has a lot of value even after 100 years, most of the books and most of the music, most of the documentaries, most of the videos are simply not available uh, because of the copyright problem. We have to solve this problem and I think uh, Qatar and ICT Qatar is uniquely positioned to do something about it. Thank you.